There we go. Now we're doing this properly. Hello again. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Today is Friday, the 18th of the August. And I was just broadcasting live to the wrong platform. I'm waiting for it to show up on Facebook and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and it wasn't showing up. Oops. So what I was saying to absolutely no one, because there was no one there to watch because it was going to the wrong place, was that I'm going to set up a, a, um, a render. I'm going to do a render that's a countdown clock. And you've probably seen this in other live broadcasts so that I can start broadcasting a few minutes early and have a little countdown clock starting in three, two, one, uh, but like five minutes out or something giving people a chance to come in and, and watch the show live. Um, because what's happening, I realize, is that as a broadcaster, I don't have any capability in Facebook to say, I'm going to go live in five minutes other than just making a post. But I don't have anything, any way for a actual live broadcast to be kind of pre-announced and get ready to start and start notifying people, that sort of thing. So what I do, what I'll need to do is have this little countdown and then people start getting notifications. Hey, Photo Joseph is live and you come here and you see, oh, he's going to be on in two minutes. So that's kind of what we're going to have to do. So we're going to try that out. Um, I'm going to have uh, have somebody render out something in After Effects for me so we can use that. Anyway, so with that said, let's get into today's demo. As I said yesterday, um, I, uh, I mentioned that I was going to continue on showing off tools and processes that we used for the shoot that I just did in San Francisco. And one of the really, really important parts of a shoot like that is getting model releases. This is a commercial shoot, so we're doing commercial work, which means that no matter who you are, unless you're uh, on the street and way in the distance and possibly recognizable, but really basically you can't tell who you are, you're clearly just part of the background crowd. Um, if you are a notable, noticeable person at all, we need to have a model release to be able to use it for commercial use. And of course, if we have any notable properties that were inside of any private property, we got to get property releases. So this is a really big deal to do. So I have an app that I've been using for years on my iPhone. It's also on the iPad that allows me to do these model releases really quick and easily. And so I thought I would give you a quick demo of this. Now I'm not going to go, I'm going to show you how I use it. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do the full setup of this. I'm going to actually reach out to the company and see if they'll join me on my Twip Apps podcast because I think they'd be a great addition to that because this app really is quite robust. You can really go in there and, um, and customize the heck out of this thing, which is really, really cool. So with that said, let's go ahead and, uh, and jump into this and see how this guy looks. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to, let's get the right screen up here. Where are we? All right. And we'll switch over to this. And uh oh, why is it black? That should not be black. Okay, we're going to unplug and plug the phone back in. And, and, that's very odd. Aha, there it comes. Whew, that was weird. All right. So the app is called Easy Release. You can see it on the right side, a couple of icons up. Open that guy up, and here we go. So here's all the releases that have already been done. You can see them sorted by date, the person's name, the name of the shoot on here, um, and whether it's been sent or it's ready to sign or whatever it is. That ready to sign there one was a mistake. We kind of screwed something up there, but that's okay. So the process of this is pretty straightforward. Up in the top right, you'll see there's a plus button. Tap the plus. And first off, it's going to ask me if this is a model release or a property release. So we'll do a model. So I tap model release. Now it's got a built-in standard release, which is great for the vast majority of things you might want to use. Um, but then you'll see under there, there's custom. So I have three different custom ones that I have built. I have a limited one. Uh, and you see it says limited model assigns. So what that means is the only people who have right to use it is the model themselves and the assigns, which in this case, I'd be an assigned or if I named another client in there. What that specific ones means is that I don't have the, the right to sub-license it. So if uh, basically that means I can't use it for stock. That's really the real reason that that's there. Uh, and I don't use that unless people ask for it. If people say, well, uh, are you going to use this for stock? So no, no, I'm, I don't plan to, but just so you're comfortable and you know that I can't use it for stock, we'll use this version of the release. Underneath that, you'll see two more, Panasonic Plus and Panasonic Standard. So I was doing a shoot for Panasonic, and the difference there is the Plus is a paid one. So if I am, let's say if I um, want to video a street for performer, if shoot a street performer, and I say, hey, man, can I do some shots of you? Um, sometimes I'll offer money up front. Sometimes I'll wait to see if they ask for it. But it might be, you know, 20 bucks, might be 100 bucks. It just depends on what's going on and how important it is to me, of course, to get the shot. So I've got two different templates in here, and I called them standard and plus as opposed to unpaid and paid because if the model's looking over my shoulder, I don't want them to see, well, oh, wait, there's a paid option? You know, we don't want to do that. So that's just my own little code, if you will. So I'm going to choose Panasonic Plus for this one. So I tap plus, and it goes to the next 
uh, the next page. So on this page, we can fill in the shoot info name, or I can select from a list. So I'll select from a list because I've already saved one. And I'll go down. And I'm just going to continue doing this for the, um, for the one that we just did. So there's Panasonic San Francisco. I tap that, and it just fills in the information that I had already done. Um, and on that previous page, let's say if I back up to that previous page, look. Oh, shoot date automatically was filled in. It didn't even ask for it. It just filled it in. Um, oh, okay. Here, you know what? I'm gonna I am gonna back up because here we go. A lot of that um, automated automated stuff was filled in because of the template. So Panasonic Plus next. It's already filled in, so now we'll actually get to go through these pages. One of the advantages, therefore, of choosing from the list is it fills in a bunch of those steps for you automatically. Um, hey, Sean, Sean Mark Nipper, buddy, says you love this app. This is a good one, isn't it? I think I introduced this to you, didn't I? Hope so. Um, all right, so shoot info, Panasonic San Francisco. There's a code on there that's an internal code. So the next page, again, would automatically be filled in because I used it from a template. In this case, location, United States, San Francisco, California. Next, shoot date. So again, pre-filled in from the, um, uh, from the template, but I would do this by hand if I was doing it that way. And then now we get into the next question that's, that's going to come up regardless, the model's name. So I can select from the contacts, my existing contacts, if I'm shooting someone I know. I can select from the list, which is someone I may have worked with before and done a model release before. It saved it all in there. Or it's somebody completely new. So I'm going to put in my own name. Let's just say I'm taking a picture of me. So there's, there's me. I know how to spell my name. Joseph. Oops. <laughs> Notifications. Uh, 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 da, 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 so come on, stop it. And, you know, here, I'm going to very quickly go into notifications and turn off notifications. Oops, wrong one. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. Always. There we go. Now it'll leave me alone. Okay, so there's me. I hit next. Uh, you don't have to put in the address. This is not a required field, but you certainly can if you want to. And um, it's... It's one of those things that's probably better to have their physical address, but uh, as long as you get some way to contact them, email and phone number, that's usually enough. So you can put in the address if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and skip it for now. Tap next. Now, contact info, this is important. So we're going to put in my email address. Come here, autofill for me. There we go. And my phone number. We're going to skip the phone number, but I can put in the phone number. And then I go next again. And date of birth. So this is a really important one. So if you're shooting a a minor, you're going to need parental permission. So you can put in the date of birth, or you can just say adult. They're an adult. Let me back up again. Oops. Just jump straight to the picture one. Or if I tap minor, it's going to, in a future stage, it's going to actually ask, uh, ask for an adult signature, the parent signature and their information. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as adult. So it, I tapped adult. It would automatically then take me to the next, which is the camera, so I can take a picture. So I'm going to flip this around, take a picture of me. Jeez. There we go. So there's my model release picture. Hit use photo on there. And now because I put in here the, um, the plus, I have this custom field that I've built. And I've built all of this. And again, to learn how to build this, I'm going to get these guys on the show, on the TWIP app show. Um, I can now put in the compensation. So if, you know, if I paid 50 bucks, then I can go in there and say $50 right there. You'll notice underneath that, I have a tax ID or social security number. If I am paying someone uh, either in a single a single event or over time, accumulated over time, if I'm going to pay them more than, I think right now it's $700, I believe that's it, then I have to file taxes on them. So I'm going to need their tax ID, either the social security number or the tax ID. If this is a street performer, I'm giving them 50 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is, um, I don't need to worry about that. So I don't bother with that in this case. Tap next again, and we are now at the summary page. So everything that I need is in here. So you see it's got my name at the top, says status, says ready to sign. It shows when it was last updated. Uh, I can go in here now. I can add an addendum if I wanted to. So if I wanted to add any extra information in there, I could do that. Uh, photographer, there's that. Info on the shoots, all that's in there. And there's the model. Well, same model for me. There's the model's address, which I didn't add in. There's the parent. If I had tapped minor, of course, then the parent would be in there. Uh, compensation, it shows that in the tax ID. And the signatures. So it shows photographer signed and when that was signed. And that's when I signed it in here as the photographer. Now, I've, it's actually updated because um, I just redid it yesterday, but the signature that was in there was several years old. I don't have to do this every time. I sign it once, it saves it, and then it reuses that signature. But you see in red, it says model not signed, so that's the thing that has to be done. So I could tap on it there, or if I didn't want to scroll through the whole thing, back at the top, it says status, ready to sign. I just tap that. It scrolls me down, tap where it says model to sign. Here's the full release, so the model can read this. 
scroll down, scroll down, and, and then it says tap here to agree. Tap here to agree, it says rotate sideways before signing, and if I do this, it's gonna kind of mess up the, uh, here, let's see if I can do it like this. We'll go, there we go. So now we see the signature on there. So now I can do a signature on there. Tap on done, it brings me back. Let's go back to the um, vertical view on here. And that's it, ready to go. So now that it's ready, it says tap here to create. So you see PDF created, tap here to create, tap that. It generates the PDF, there it is. Now in the top right corner, there's a share button and I can email or print that. I wanna email it, so I'm gonna tap on email and I can email it either to myself, to the model or both. So I'm gonna say both and I don't have email set up on this device, if you can believe that. Long story, but I don't have the regular email set up in here. Um, but you would have your email set up and off it would go. And that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool little app. So again, I love this thing. I've been using it for years. I've got <clears throat> dozens, if not hundreds of releases in here. It really works out really well. And um, and I plan to continue using it. Now there is a question in here. Sean, again, hello buddy, has said, uh, Joseph, do you use a general blanket template or do you have several different versions depending on the job? So if we, let me go back in here again, we cancel this, create a new one, model. So this is the page where you see the, the versions of it that I have. So there's the standard built in, which is what I would use the majority of the time if I'm just kind of randomly getting a picture for someone. In the case of a a client job like the Panasonic one, I want to make sure that their name is listed as part of the assigns. I want to make sure that that specifically we're licensing the foot of uh, their image to that person. <clears throat> this is also so there's no question. I don't want to. I don't want to be sneaky about it. I, I don't have to do this, right? If I walk up to a person on the street and I'm on a commercial shoot and I ask them to sign a commercial model release, I'm under no obligation to disclose who I'm shooting for. But I like to. I think it's it's nice for people to know. I think if I was approached on the street, asked to be photographed for a commercial shoot, and then I saw my image on a on a Panasonic um, ad, I'd be like, really? That's what it was for? You couldn't have told me that at the time. Um, so I like to be a bit more upfront about it. But again, you don't have to. Legally, you don't have to. So, uh, and I'm not a lawyer. Ask your lawyer. Um, so I generate a custom one for the project that I'm on, but this is not necessary. So. That's the way that I do it, but that's just my choice and the way I choose to do it. Alrighty, I think that's it, folks. Uh, that is everything I've got in there. Thank you, Sean, for the question. Thanks for everybody who's watching live. And uh, let's see, I was going to plug something at the end of this and I completely forgot what I was going to plug. Oh, well, guess not. So I will see you all next week. It is Friday, so it's time to take the weekend off. Hope you enjoy yours. If you have any questions or ideas for a future photo moment, by all means, post them as a comment on this or any other video, or you can shoot me a message through Facebook as well. That's it, guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. See ya.